Greetings everybody, how's it going? And welcome to my latest video. I would say in the past few days and of recently I've been getting quite nostalgic and I've been reminiscing on some of my old days at school. You see, I wasn't in secondary school for very long, high school for my American viewers. But while I was there, I learned quite a bit about the human condition and the psychology of human beings. And I learned, more so than anything, things that I weren't taught. I kind of came into acknowledgement about things that were somewhat hidden. This is when I knew I was becoming a decipherer and a cryptographer of a hidden symbolism. But at the time it was all muddled and it was all sort of crazy and I wasn't sure really what path I was going to go on. And things were unfolding by the hour, let alone the day. But I do remember one thing which is quite symbolic and poetic and it's sort of almost quite frightening about the culture and how society works. I feel that there is always two possibilities in school. And these two outcomes and possibilities are based upon these two very generic classroom posters. We've all seen them. And I actually sat in history class one day and on the back of the door there was two posters. And one had a picture of a blue collar worker who was filthy, covered in, uh, in mud and grime and oil. He was drilling holes in a pipe or he was digging ditches, something like that. And it said, work hard. And the next poster had a, uh, a white collar worker in an office, he was clean, he was tidy, he looked organized, and he was sitting near a desk on a computer doing some white collar work, and it said, work smart. And I looked at both of these pictures, and I, I took them in, even at that age, at the age of 11, I took them in, and I was thinking and trying to imagine myself in one scenario. And I could not imagine myself as a blue collar worker. I thought it was a uh, slave labor. No offense, that's, that's generally what I do think. I think it's slave labor, it pays low. And I believe I was better than that. And I looked at white collar and I thought, no, I don't like that either. I think that's boring, that's soulless, that's a drone's job. And I began to think uh, in the coming days after that, why isn't there a third poster that says, be creative, use your imagination. Use your artistic talent. Where's the third poster that says that? And how come it isn't there? What about the authors, the painters, the musicians, the poets, the craftsmen, the tailors? What about them? Why is it always just work hard, work smart, and there's no alternatives? There's no alternative beliefs. There's no nothing. Why does it have to be so cut and dried? And I feel that that's what the education system is. It is that cut and dry system. You either fit into the rhetoric, you either fit into the system, or you do not. And if you do not fit in, you will be severely punished for it. And I don't mean just fit in as though behave and conform. I mean fit in as though you go there to either become blue collar or white collar, to work a physical manual labor job, or to go to a boring office. And I don't think that they give any regard to the imagination whatsoever. But that raises another interesting point. Can you teach somebody to be creative? Can you actually teach somebody to be imaginative? I'm not so sure that you can teach them how to do it, but I feel as though there are ways to awaken the inner artist from within. Not necessarily you can make them actually be artists, but you can give them the incentive to pursue a more artful lifestyle. I generally believe that you can help people uh, overcome their creative boundaries. You can't necessarily teach them, but that's for a different subject. But where is this third poster? Maybe you guys in your schools have seen a poster like that. If so, please tell me. This was some time ago for me now. Maybe things have changed, but um, I sincerely doubt they have. The education system has never changed. It's very similar to the psychiatric mental health system where they're still using outdated medication from the 1950s. Not much seems to change when it comes to the mind. I don't think people want to advance with the treatments and the kind of education that they use. I also keep in mind that I went to a very, very strict Catholic school, very strict religious school, and you had always had the religious propaganda that I don't even remember them telling us to become priests or anything like that. That at least would have been quite exotic and exciting, and it might have been something that I would have been interested in at the time. Obviously not now, but uh, back then it would have been something that I probably would have been uh, interested in somewhat. 
but there is no third poster. There's always that same rhetoric of work hard, work smart, and if you can't do either of those, or you don't want to do either of those, that's the key word here. You do not want to do either of those, you just get ridiculed and mocked, and that is absolute nonsense, and I completely, utterly uh, disagree with that completely. And I feel that there's so many people out there who have the great minds to conceive wonderful ideas for stories, for video games, for, for movies. And these kind of things are overlooked, drastically overlooked. And why is that? Is it a conspiracy? And a lot of people do say to me, Josh, you are very conspiratorial by nature. You always look on the dark side of, of uh, conspiracies and misfortune. That's not true. I think that it's the same thing as when you read a book and you see one lie. You don't tend to believe the rest of the book, or at least you're skeptical. And so many conspiracies have come true, and I found them out, and they've come true for me. It's gotten to the point now where you think, okay, well, I found out that half a dozen of these major conspiracies are true, such as the Gulf of Tonkin incident. That what else can't the government lie about or what else can't the people manipulate? And it comes to that for me, that we are not all clean people. We are not all clean minded. We, we certainly don't have that ability, most of us. And I think if you was to put most of humanity on an island and left them to it, they would kill each other. Humans just are not civilized by nature. We are quite barbaric and as we say, we are animals at the end of the day, but I think it always comes down to the fact that people want to suppress other people, especially when it comes to a talent that cannot be learnt. I, like I said, I don't think you can learn to have an imagination. I just don't think you can. I think you either have one or you lose it. Now, some people do. Some people grow up and they lose their inner child and they lose that mindset to do creative things. Or you hang on to it like I've done in my life, and you pursue it and you let something come of it. But you can lose it, and I think if your fire has died out and your flame has been extinguished, I believe it's very, very hard to get that flame back. And posters like that do not help today. They really do not help. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about. I thought you'd find that interesting as I was thinking in my mind just now about my past and I'll probably make a series about what I thought while I was at school and the kind of things that I've gotten into. Nothing mischievous, just normal adolescent stuff, but at the same time I believe that I had a lot of those really deep philosophical thoughts even back then, which could have been the stepping stones, well they probably were, to the person that I am today. And of course the founder of, in my opinion, the greatest philosophy ever and that is Lamatology and the Law of Four. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you soon.